It's July 30th, 2023. A top-level speedrunner for the game Super Mario Sunshine with the potential for a world record has a chance at a world record. You're probably thinking, Wow, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, it is crazy. At least, once you know the full context. We're not talking about some fresh young prodigy full of motivation to prove himself to everyone, oh no. Quite the opposite. SMS で好きな果物は何ですかバナナ This is Tobo. Tobo is really good at Super Mario Sunshine for the Nintendo GameCube. In fact, so good, he can play the game using only his feet. Now, why exactly would he do this? Well, the controller was too warm to use with his hands. Fair enough. More to the point, Tobo has arguably the most impressive legacy in Mario Sunshine's most competitive speedrun category, Beat the Game, commonly known as Any%. Percent. I myself am often considered a boomer of Sunshine, having started back in 2013, but when did Tobo get his start? Eh, Mario Sunshine task が投稿されて、真似できそうと思ったからです。A task is when various emulator tools like slow down and save states are used to assist in creating a theoretical perfect speedrun. So, was this task perfect? No, it is extremely outdated. Though GameCube tasks were basically unheard of in 2010, and it was Tobo's main inspiration to speedrun the game himself, using his hands. I assume. Tobo helped kickstart SMS speedrunning as we know it, and from the beginning, he was determined to be the best. 2010 was quite a long time ago, so I asked him if he could remember which strategies he developed in those early days. I thought of a lot, but I thought of a lot of my experience was I thought of the stage of the stage and the stage of the stage and the stage of in episode 1 of Pianta Village, you're given the task of cooling off three fiery chain chocolates by launching them into a body of water. The shine will spawn after Flood gives you the advice to be kind to your pets. Pretty sound advice, about as useful as saying don't be racist. So Tobo discovered that by pausing the game the moment this text box appears, it will cancel Flood's dialogue. By doing this, the shine will spawn much quicker, even including the time spent pausing the game. This technique appeared in Tobo's first world record from October 2011. But speedrun records rarely get far without that push from another source. Competition came in the form of another Japanese player with the tag Chibi. By the end of 2011, Chibi had attained an impressive 133.01. This was the record for most of 2012 until Tobo got the first 132 in August. The Japanese SMS community had a significant lead on the rest of the world. However, with the dawn of Twitch.tv casting a spotlight on speedrunning, that would quickly change. A revolving door of players would briefly get their slice of the world record pie. In these ever-changing times of major skip discoveries and the community exploding with new talents, one constant remained. The continued dominance of Tobo. Eighteen world records in a span of less than five years. Now, 2016 marked the beginning of a stagnation in major discoveries to the any percent category. Then there was Nindide, who single-handedly pushed Sunshine speedrunning into a new era. Nindide's impressive streak of records created a clear dividing line between the old school and the modern. 
Tobo still enjoyed playing Mario Sunshine as much as ever, but by the turn of 2017, he wasn't playing any percents nearly as much. He turned his sights on other categories like 120 shines, where you collect every single shine sprite as well as every blue coin. He also dabbled in some other speedruns, and even had a couple records in the 2017 Nintendo Switch title, ARMS. Here's a fun stat. Tobo never ranked below top 10 until May of 2019 during a period of inactivity. Over the next couple years, he would return to any percent and set some impressive personal best, but wasn't quite the world record hog that he once was. In speedrunning, and any competitive endeavor for that matter, the top has a shelf life. Not so much in a physical sense where you age out of your prime athletic years, more of a mental aging out. Over time, top level competition gets increasingly more difficult, which eventually leads to a self questioning of is the grind even still enjoyable if I have to put in way more efforts to achieve what I already achieved in the past? Popular retro games have had a long time to evolve between different eras of dominant players. Most of the best players of the respective game will get passed up, assuming a continued wider interest in the game at hand. There are, of course, those rare exceptions to the rule. Remember that 2010 Mario Sunshine task that inspired Tobo in the first place? It was created by Batora. The same year that Batora created a task of Super Mario Sunshine, he also got some world records in Super Mario 64's 120 star category. Other skilled players would follow suit. Big names like Honey, Siglemic, Puncation, Cheese 5 Each player had a distinct period of pushing the human limit of 120 star to levels that were previously unimaginable. In spite of all that progression, a familiar name would return to the podium. Now, while the range in years between records is unprecedented, it is such a large range that 2010 and 2021 is like apples and oranges. There honestly wasn't much fanfare to achieving a world record in 2010 before speedrunning really took off in the following years. And while part of motivation is the intrinsic feeling of personal achievements, you can't deny the extrinsic motivation from the admiration of others. It's human nature after all. If Tobo were to accomplish a similar feat in Mario Sunshine, it would be difficult to conjure up the same extrinsic motivation. Having held records during those prime years of 2015 and 2016 while outside interest in SMS speedrunning was undeniably high, where then would Tobo find his source of motivation? Late 2019 marked the introduction of a major quality of life improvement, the allowance of hacked file. A hacked file can be downloaded and put onto a GameCube memory card using homebrew software. The vast majority of runners already use Wii's because of faster load times, and this modification is relatively easy to set up. All it does is flip a few cutscene flags and allow runners to skip the first three intro cutscenes. All of the airstrip gameplay you would normally do is still intact. This is why you'll see people starting their timer at 540. Admittedly, sitting through these cutscenes wasn't that big of a deal when the speedrun was less optimized, but in recent years, something had to change, both for the sake of speedrunners' sanity and the sake of stream viewers. For anyone who may not want to bother setting up hacked file, there exists an alternative known as Peach File. This will skip the first two cutscenes with no hacking required. After making steady progress, Tobo achieved a 113 in December of 2021, the fifth person to surpass that massive sub-114 milestone. Unfortunately, his ultimate goal of reclaiming the world record was even further out of reach. 
The highly talented runner Guy2308 was on a hot streak of improvements, culminating in a 113.17. Tobo worked hard to accomplish everything he's done so far, but the upcoming grind was undoubtedly the hardest yet. ここ最近は世界記録を再び達成できると常日頃から確信していましたか、まあ、誰かが1時間12分を達成しない限りは可能だと思っていました。For a while now, the holy grail of SMS has been a 1 hour and 12 minute speed run. Let's put it in perspective how much more difficult a 112 is versus a world record back in say 2015. The baseline method of climbing this windmill is to jump on a platform and wait until it reaches a height from which you can safely jump and hover. The speedrun improves on this by introducing windmill wall kicks. However, if you're too fast reaching this windmill for the usual side flip setup, what then should you do? You could always wait for a moment before side flipping, but what if there was a better option? Like, say, a glitchy wall kick hover cancel ledge climb into a sideways buffered spin jump wide turn wall kick at a 90 degree angle? This multi level improvement of strategies is present in the majority of levels, even for ones as simple as the Shadow Mario shines. You begin with what I like to call the casual chase down. Next comes accurately spraying with good spacing. Then the improvements of landing some spam sprays. And finally, an improvement on the improvements by timing a precise grounded spam spray. Defeating Shadow Mario in the fastest known way is called a quick kill. These quick kills, along with other techniques that top players currently pull off, are orders of magnitude tougher than a few years ago. They often save a fraction of a second to maybe a few seconds at best. It's one thing to pull these tricks off on an individual level basis, it's another thing to perform them back to back in one complete speedrun package. After a small hiatus to casually snag a sub 3 hour time in 120 shines, dun, 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 dun. we arrive at 2023. Tobo was generally one of the more consistent players in his dominant years, but the growing pains of learning and adapting to all this modern movement resulted in attempt sessions that were noticeably more reset heavy. Undeterred by early game repetition and late game mishaps, he trusted the process and got a handful of small PBs. Then all of a sudden, and I can't pinpoint an exact date, but something weird happened. Tobo got consistent. Like, really damn consistent. Most of the difficult updated movements seemed to just click all at once. He would increasingly get more runs into late game and even rack up some additional 113s. Tobo, the people must know, what is your hidden secret to all this mystical thing that I think is called improvements? まあ、人のプレイを見て、まずは真似します。で、その中で、自分の目標達成に向けて必要なアプローチ。必要じゃないアプローチっていうのを選んで区間練習をしますで区間練習するときに自分のその時の自己ベストのラップと比較しながら走るといいなというのを自分で考えて今はそれをやってます Efficient practice methods never would have guessed Speaking of best segments let me draw attention to one of these live split statistics Best possible time Before the speedrun even starts, this stat represents a player's cumulative best segments for every split, also known as the sum of best segments or SOB. The best possible time will increase every split by the amount that's lost to the best segments for that split. It begs the question if so many top players have a SOB in the 111 range, then how hasn't even a 112 been accomplished? One thing for sure is that it's not merely a skill issue. Hey, my, what you need in the boom, huh? ボスパックンとボステレサ以外です。嫌いな部分は今言いました。RNG or random number generator plays an interesting role in the SMS speedrun. Of the four major RNG levels, PD Piranha and King Boo are most notorious. In episode 5 of Bianco Hills, there's potential to lose up to a minute from random chance, though that is exceedingly rare. He's also more likely to give you a decent pattern than a bad pattern. 
I could go into much more detail, but for all intents and purposes, think of PD as an annoying gatekeeper that causes a few more early game resets. That leaves us with the one level that plagued Tobo to no end. In the fights with King Boo, there's a 34.3% chance of the ideal outcome of zero extra cycles. Each extra cycle has a 30% chance of occurring, and there's no limits to how many can occur, each one costing roughly 7 seconds. Three extra cycles or more is usually a death sentence for top level competition. But King Boo's randomness extends beyond extra cycles. Wherever the fruit that's needed to damage King Boo randomly flies out also makes a difference. A solid couple of months went by where Tobo frequently lost PB pace runs to bad King Boo luck. To add on further mental damage, he was comparing his splits to the amazing King Boo segments from his personal best. A 244 segments is extremely uncommon. Even with zero extra cycles, he was likely to bleed a few seconds of time loss. Tobo went for plenty of risky strategies, but only the ones he was confident he could pull off under the pressure of PB pace. Most notably, he started going for a 7-tooth eel setup. This entails cleaning off 6.5 teeth and finishing off the 7th one as the eel reopens its mouth. Afterwards, you clean off the final tooth as you take damage from it, which activates the eel cutscene skip. The 7 tooth setup is so precise that it often doesn't work out, but messing up isn't too punishing as long as you can improvise a makeshift 6 tooth setup. <laughs> Perhaps Tobo's gameplay wasn't the flashiest or even the most optimal when compared to other top players, but never count out on the experience and mental fortitude of a seasoned veteran. After surviving the shell secrets, the run had reached a pivotal moment. Remember those quick kills that I mentioned earlier? Well, Shadow Mario in Noki Bay has one of the trickiest quick kill setups. Tobo's best possible time of 1.13.14 meant he absolutely needed to nail Shadow Mario to maintain world record pace. <laughs> the deadly Corona Mountain level still remains, and it needs to go extremely well, but after that insanely clutch quick kill, only one thought ran through Tobo's head. Tensai! Yes! 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 
うわマジかよちょっと待ってうわマジかよマジかよ<笑>やっ July 30th, 2023. A once unstoppable speedrunner has just tied the world record to the seconds, proving to everyone that he really is just that unstoppable. They often say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, you know the rest. A couple weeks later, a new record of 113.08 was set by JJSRL. This came to nobody's surprise because JJ is an absolute monster of SMS any percent. As of today, the alluring 112 is still yet to happen, but a number of runners do have the potential to make it a reality. The question remains does Tobo plan to pursue this lofty goal? まあ、これからは、まあ、生活の邪魔にならない程度に遊びたいなと思ってます。The recording of that answer is admittedly a bit outdated, so with the power of foresights, I can confirm that Project 112 is in the making. Huge thanks to Wilco for providing me with all of the translations. He is truly the MVP of this video. And as always, thanks to Weslet Bullock, Cody Jones, Vinushika, Joshua Nelson, and the rest of my supporters over on Patreon. Peace.